All right. So the, the next thing, we're going to talk about reducing. R-E-D-U-C-I-N-G. Ernesto, do you like to cook? Yeah. Yeah? Have you ever seen cooking instructions that tell you to reduce something? You've never read a book in your whole life? Well, not cooking. Oh. I know, I'm just giving you a hard time. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I was it's not my fault though. I was born a jerk. Yeah. Yeah, so sometimes sometimes when you're cooking stuff, especially if you're gonna cook something like if you're gonna make like homemade barbecue sauce, uh, you have to do reducing and that just means like you start with a whole bunch of liquid liquid and you cook it until the liquid evaporates. So it's the same amount of flavor, but it's concentrated. It's smaller. So reducing means, of course, to make smaller. But when we're talking about fractions, of course, um, it's going to be the same value. Kind of like, um, say you had this much money in your wallet, a $5 bill and a, a $5 bill and one, two, three, four, five, one dollar bills. Oh no, that would be fifteen dollars. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There, that's twenty dollars, right? So you could have all this and look like you're rich, or you could just have one twenty dollar bill. Worth the same, but one's smaller. Yeah? That's what we're gonna do. So for example, mm, Oh, what's your favorite non-reduced fraction, Jackie? Mm, I don't have one. What a weirdo. <laughs> oh, did I say that out loud? Yeah. I'm sorry, Jackie. I'm really tired. Forgive me. <laughs> Jackie, let's try 18 over 27. Okay? So if we can reduce, that would mean that there's a common factor. There's a number that divides into both. So reducing's all about the greatest common factor. What's the biggest thing that goes into nine, or nine is the answer, sorry. What's the biggest thing that goes into 18 and 27? And of course that's nine, right? So what we really do is we divide both top and bottom nine by nine. And, and I'm gonna write it out over here. You see, nine divided by nine is one, so you're left with two thirds. But we don't usually write that. What we usually just do is do this instead. 18 divided by 9 is 2, 27 divided by 9 is 3, and you're done. Evelyn, you alright? Where are all your buddies today? Huh. They left you? Yeah. Are you sad? I'm confused where they are. You're confused where they are? Yeah. They are too, because, uh, okay. Alright. Ernesto will keep you company. He'll probably help you more anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think I'm gonna embarrass Ernesto. I think Ernesto got the highest score on the test on the quiz. Dang Ernesto. And it was funny because I think you had the lowest confidence about your score when you turned it in. Right? It's like, oh I didn't do very good. I did really bad. And he did like awesome. Right. So yeah. Alright. I'll hand your quizzes back in just a minute, okay? So last thing, let's talk about exponents. Let's talk about the thing that caused you guys trouble with exponents. Here's what caused the problems with exponents. Let's say, let's say we had something like, can you guys see that? It says 2x to the fifth, 3x to the third. What, Daniela, did you miss these? You think so? This is just reducing 2. See, look, you can divide x to the third into both of these x's. Like, if I were to write it out, I can't do anything with 2 and 3. 2 and 3, they're what's called, they're called, like, relatively prime. They don't have a common factor. But x to the third times x squared is x to the fifth, right? This isn't a step. I'm just going to show you that, that this is just reducing. So I'm gonna. I, what I'm doing is I'm taking this thing apart. You see, I'm making. I'm showing that that x to the third goes into x to the fifth. 
because x to the fifth is really this. Again, this isn't the steps. I, I'm trying to see that you understand. Wait, wait. Gabby, you see why that this is true? Because this is 1, 2, 3, and it's being multiplied by 2 more. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's true. This equals that. The reason I broke it apart is because there's an x to the third in the bottom, you see? And Jackie, something divided by itself is 1, and so you're left with 2x squared over 3. Now, Yolanda, we had a whole bunch of, like, um, properties or or rules, and one of them was this. Oh, well, that's an n for no. Not Ernest no. No, oh, that didn't really work. Sorry. Anyway, um, this was it. The top, the top exponent minus the bottom exponent. And when we did the, when we did all those, we saw where that came from. But if you don't remember where it came from, that's okay. You just have to know it, one way or another. So. Gabby, if we look at if we look at this and this, right? X to the fifth, x to the third, that would be five minus three. That's famously known as two. Even on a Tuesday, five minus three is two. Yep. All right, Oscar, you ready to get your quiz back? No. Oscar. Um, a lot of times people think that because I'm a math teacher, that means I must have uh, loved math, and that's why I studied math in college, because it was my favorite subject. Definitely the, very far from the truth. The first time I went to college, um, it's kind of a loser. All I did, Jackie, was party. Mm-hmm. I passed one class the first semester, and I didn't pass any the second time, and they kicked me out. Where did you go? Western New Mexico University in Silver City, New Mexico. So I did not do very well. Mm. Mm. So then later, when I was an adult, I went back, and I wanted to prove something to myself. And so I took the hardest courses I could find. And to me at the time, that was math. I started off in this math class, 081. Yep. So, Oscar, the reason I mentioned that, uh, I learned all the things that you're not supposed to do to learn math, because I did them all. One thing to not do is when you get a quiz back and you don't like it, is to put it away or throw it away or ignore it. That will not help you. You need to look at it. You've got to learn it. Even though it makes you uncomfortable, it makes you feel bad. Even if you look at the grade and you're like, man, my mom is right about me. I am a loser. <laughs> yeah. Even if it makes you feel that bad, can't do it. Can't do it. Got to learn from it. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to... Oh, I already gave you yours back, didn't I? All right. A bowl. Oh, where's Marlene? Hmm. So did Sam help you, Yolanda? Sam, a little bit, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Just a tad. Just a tad? Are you being... Just a tad, or did she help you a lot, or just a tad? No, just a tad. 
just a tag. Just a tag. Okay. But, but she gave me some apps to download on my phone. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. To help you out. Sometimes knowing the answer can help you if you use it to learn. Right, if it can give you the steps. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even just if it just gives you the answer so you can say, oh, yeah, I got it. Mm -hmm. problem with some of the apps is sometimes they're wrong, really? even with basic calculations. Oh, so you got to be careful with those. Yeah. But I'm not saying it's bad. It's just a word of caution. So if you're, like, really confused, it could be the apps wrong. Oh, I see. Yeah. No, she, she wanted to check with two different apps. Mm -hmm. They're both the same, and they hopefully are both right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was all into it. She was trying to do the problems herself. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you were supposed to teach me. <laughs> I know. Shut up, Sam. Give me the pencil. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I like Sam. She's all right. I know. Yeah. She, yeah, she cried a lot in my class. She did. Yeah. You could ask her about it. She'll tell you. Okay. Yep. People get frustrated, especially freshmen, and, and sometimes freshmen, um, not just girls, freshmen, boys and girls, they sometimes cry a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now I, now when, when I'm in my office working and I see kids, you know, walking by, sometimes I wonder who just left their math class all frustrated and confused. Well, especially if they're in Cambridge math. Oh, there's tears, believe me. There's tears. Yeah. So, um, hmm. Who's got questions? Do you see what you did on number one, Yolanda? On number one? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. That's called not seeing the forest for all the trees, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> You're just like so busy on what to do that you didn't see the easy <laughs> thing. Happens. Happens. Totally, totally. That's yeah, why there's yeah. more than one problem of each kind. Uh -huh. So that way if you mess one up because you just didn't see it right, you have another chance. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say, like, what's really going to hurt your grade is if you don't know how to do a topic. Jacobo, you killed that test, huh? Yeah. Yeah, man. This other question and the, the fraction one? Yeah. This one in particular? Yeah, almost everybody missed that. Number 14? Yeah. Let's do number 14 together, shall we? Oscar's like, yes, I want to do number 14. Yeah. No, Oscar? Mm -hmm. Oscar, what do you do at Safeway? I read all over the store. Yeah, like what? I work in the back room, lift everything. Do you like it? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. Not at all, huh? Okay. All right. Negative one seventh. Minus negative one six. Is that the problem we're talking about? Yeah. Okay, I see why this is tricky. There's a bunch of negative signs. Negative signs cause trouble. Mm -hmm. Just like people that always think negatively, it doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. Doesn't work out. They're almost always weak people too, because they make themselves victims of circumstance. So mm -hmm. let's see if we can get rid of some of this negativity. Minus a negative. That means the opposite of subtraction. Opposite of subtraction is addition. These two become a plus. So I'm going to just go ahead and rewrite the whole thing. Man, whoever left this pen, thank you. It writes nicely. Yeah. Okay, so we're good so far. Now, um, Evelyn, if I was doing this problem on my own, I would not have re rewritten this. I just would have crossed, like, made plus signs out of those two, right? But I wanted to, yeah, just make sure everybody sees. Now, in order to add fraction, you have to have a common denominator. The smallest thing that 7 and 6 go into is 42. So to make 7 and 6 into 42, I have to multiply them by each other. Yeah? Hmm. You see? Yeah, that's, that's one. Positivo uno. Unless I messed up something. This is entirely likely. I'm super tight. Physically exhausted. I'd feel better if somebody offered me some chocolate covered almonds, but no. I offered you. I'm just teasing you, Jackie. I'm sorry. You haven't even eaten your recent. I know. I know. 
<sighs> yeah. I'm rude. What are you going to do? I should change my name to Rudy. So, Gabby, how are you doing with this? I'm not still doing Yeah. Gabby, you're going to be okay as long as you don't give up. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's really important is you have to work a little bit every day consistently. You ever tried to push a refrigerator? Yeah. It's, it's hard, huh? But once it starts going, it's easier, right? That's kind of how it is with math. Like, if you do a little bit of math every day, it's kind of like the refrigerator's already moving and you just got to keep going. But when you take a day off or a couple days off, then when you start again, it's like starting to move the refrigerator again. It's really difficult. So that's why you got to do a little bit every day. And I know that a semester can seem like a lifetime, but it's just one semester. Just a little bit every day, and then you're going to be all right. And at the end, it'll be worth it. Any other questions on the quiz? Evelyn, do you have any questions on the quiz? No, remember the circle ones were the ones you were going to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you do 25? Um, probably. Can you? Hmm. Yeah. Well, then we should probably talk about number 8, day 5. Oh, I am glad you asked about this one, Jackie. Jackie, this is why you're my favorite student. Number 20 and 5. Hmm. X squared, y to the fourth to the negative 2 power. So, Daniela, did you get this one right? No. So, you guys understand, if I put a mark on it, it's wrong. But if it's just a, a one mark, like this, then I gave you partial credit. But if it's got two, then it's totally wrong. Okay. Do you remember, Jacoba, we've got, well, one of our properties of exponents, one of our shortcuts is like, if we have a number with an exponent and it's in parentheses and it's raised to another power, that what you end up doing is you actually multiply those exponents. So it's going to be like that, right? That's what we have to do here. The trick is I've got two things in there. So I really have a negative 2 times 2 and a negative 2 times 4. So this is going to be negative 4 and negative 8. I have to do both of those exponents by the 2. Everything in the all the exponents in the parentheses get that exponent of negative 2. Is it tempting? Nope. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Evelyn knows why, right, Evelyn? You're not texting me, are you, Evelyn? It's creepy. I'm old and married. And that's why I blocked your number. Uh huh. No wonder. I know, right? <laughs> You're all right, Evelyn. You, you cracked me up. You're a good egg. Check it out, Evelyn. You can't leave an answer with a negative exponent. Now, a negative base, like this would be okay. Like if the, the base, the number in the front's negative, that's fine. But the exponents, you can't. So here, here was our other shortcut, our other property. Negative exponents are division. And the way you divide is you multiply by the reciprocal. The trick is, the kind of the thing you have to see, because this is really being multiplied by 1, but we don't write it. We don't write times 1. So what the final answer is going to be is 1 divided by x to the 4th, y to the 8th. Did you get that? No, I just got, I stopped right at negative 4, negative 8. Yolanda, did you get that? So just because they're negative exponents? Yeah, can't have them. You can't have them. Not in your final answer. Okay. Yep. So you're just going to put a 1 over it? Yeah, because it's really times, it's 1, and negative exponents are dividing. So it says, really it says 1 divided by this, divided by that. And this is how you write division as a, as a fraction. Hmm. And so did you get that one right? Okay.
All right. So, last call. Who's got questions on the quiz? Daniela, you don't have any questions? Lots of questions, huh? Did your brother do better than you? Oh, man. You, you can't let him get a better grade than you. You know why? Because in like 20 years, you're going to have a big family get-together at Christmas or something, and you know you're going to get in an argument. And if he gets a better grade, you know he's going to be like, no, 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 no. Remember, I got a better grade than that class. <laughs> you know that's going to happen. Right? Would he do that? <laughs> he wouldn't do that? Would you do that, Hakoa? Um, depends. <laughs> I think you would do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if she would do that. I don't know her very well, but no, I, think I think she would. You think she would? <laughs> I guess. Uh, all right. I guess you just got outed, Daniela. So, all right, Yolanda, you don't have any other questions on the quiz? Might as well. Let's just, you know what? We're having a little math party here. Let's just do it. Why not? Might as well. B? Ah, man. Yolanda, I am really glad you asked about this one. You know why? Well, because I have to ask a question for you guys. What's the exponent for this B? Jackie, what's the exponent for that B? It's Juan. One. There's an invisible one. If you don't see a number there, it's a one. Always. Always. And the reason that's important is because you have to multiply these exponents by three. So they weren't together then? No, it's different. And then A to the negativo nueve. Right? And then you cannot leave an exponent that's negative as your answer. There we go. Can you see that, Oscar? Yeah. Okay. Do you need glasses, Oscar? Do you have glasses? I don't know where they are. <laughs> so, Oscar, I had a student... <laughs> the past two years in high school yeah. she's really horrible vision right and in two years I think it was six times that she lost her glasses and found them by stepping on them in two years she needed six pairs of glasses because she was like Velma on Scooby Doo she would knock them off. She'd be like feeling around, knock them off, and step on them. Have you done that? Well, I lost it when I was on vacation. So. Well, that doesn't count then. It does, because I'm not going to find them and step on them. So. No, no, but I mean, I mean, well, I, I guess I mean it like this. She just lost them in her bedroom. That's no fun. You lost them on vacation, so that's okay. Yeah. It's not okay, but I mean, it's understandable. You're on vacation. Who needs glasses? Yeah. Right. Where'd you go? Oh, so you got to go back to Florida, that's all. Yeah. It's a calling. Your glasses are calling you. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Can you watch TV without your glasses? My squint. Oh, yeah. Binoculars. My tia uses binoculars. <laughs> she lays, I guess, at night. She lays in bed with her binoculars so she can watch the TV. That's weird. <laughs> True story. Okay, Ernesto. What is it? Oh, it's, I, I didn't write that. It's oh, it's B to the third over A to the nine. Oh, okay, I see. All right, then you. You see it now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, we're starting something a little new today. Hmm. You ready, Jackie? Ready. You sure? Sure. You ready, Freddy? Yeah. Quit texting. And put your stuff away. Here's what we're gonna do. Well, let me see how the book calls it. It's in the book. It's chapter 2.1. Whoa. And chapter 2 is really all about solving equations. So we're going to talk about that a lot. This is super, super important. Solving equations is super, super important. Um... 
the book does this in kind of a weird way. So we're going to try to make the book as useful as possible. But here's what we're going to do today. Before we really can solve equations, we have to be able to man, evaluate expressions. That doesn't seem to make any sense. I don't know what those. I know both of those words are in English, but I don't know what they mean together. Do you know what I mean, Hakoa? Like you read stuff and you evaluate expressions. Like I don't, I don't know what that means. Like checking? I'll show you. Yeah. yeah. And then um, the other thing we're gonna do: combine like terms. So um, these would be kinds of things that you might be asked on a quiz, but not on a test. And the reason why is these are like foundational skills. So Oscar, you got to be good at these things in order to be able to do like the big ideas in chapter two. Yeah. So here's what the first one means. When it says evaluate an expression, it's a, it, it kind of means like see what it equals given a value. So Evelyn, like say for example, um, I think this is your favorite expression in math, right? Yeah, figure. You have a tattoo of that in your forearm, right? Oh yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it, it might say something like this. Um, Gabby, what it would say is it would say evaluate the expression. x equals 2. That might be the instructions. And I think you guys probably have an idea how to do this. What you do is you replace x with 2 and then you got to follow PEMDAS. And that's really what this is all about, PEMDAS. PEMDAS is, um, man, Ernesto, PEMDAS, the order of operations, right? The order of operations is always in play at math. It's not its own topic. They teach it like it is. In elementary school, they teach the order of operations like it's its own thing, but it's not. It's always there. Because all the math we do, it's just ways of, of like combining counting, of counting numbers faster. And so the way you combine things, um, you have to be careful. You have to be careful how you put it together. Mm, we'll come to this one in a minute. Do you remember how PEMDAS works, Oscar? Yeah? Please excuse my dear Aunt Slutty. I mean, Sally. Something like that, right? Something like that. So, uh, Yolanda, the, um, this is anything in a group. has to go first. So this tells you the way you do calculations, the way you you know add, subtract, multiply, divide, the way you see something's, the way you see what is something is worth. So you have to do it in this mm -hmm. order, right? Where do square roots fit in there? Oh my goodness! I don't see square roots there. Do you? Me either. Guess just skip <laughs> over those things. We don't like them anyway, right? Nobody needs uh, square roots. When do you see a square root in your real life anyway? Oh my gosh. Huh. Yeah. Jackie, do you know where the square roots fit in here? You're, you're right, because that's what we're going to talk about next is the E, right? The E, the word for E is exponent. The thing you guys don't know is that exponents, well, actually, square roots are a kind of an exponent. Hmm. Yeah. They're kind of like the opposite, because you know an exponent's a number times itself, right? Square roots are asking what number times itself. So they're kind of related like that. They're biffles, you know. Breast friend for life. Exponents and square roots. Yeah. Like Evelyn in math. Yep. Now, <laughs> multiplication and division. 
it doesn't actually matter which one you do first except for how they are written. You have to do them first from left to right. And the same with addition and subtraction. It doesn't matter which way you do them. You do them from left to right. And that's where we get into trouble. Daniela, we get into trouble because left to right, well, most of the math we do is here. Multiply, subtract, mm -hmm. add, divide, right? And we do those from left to right. So multiply and divide left to right, add, subtract left to right. And we also read from left to right. So the thing that people always do is they just do math totally from left to right. And that's not good. OK. Hmm. There's a, speaking of an app getting stuff wrong, we're going to do one right now. A problem that an app will probably get wrong, and most calculators are going to get it wrong too. It's going to be, let's see, how should I see? Oh, hmm. Good idea. Good idea, Jackie. if my calculator and my phone will get this one right. My phone's really jacked up. I need a new phone. I call, but my phone is like really bad. <laughs> but it's working right now, so I'm going to see. <laughs> Why don't you guys talk about that? See if you can figure out what it is. Hmm. My calculator on my phone, it says... Six. Oh, it's your said two? Yeah, I'm going to use the calculator on the computer, Dora, here. Oh, not the calendar, the calculator. So six divided by three times um, two plus one equals. Oh, the calculator on the computer says two. Oh, my gosh. How can a calculator be wrong? I mean, it can't be six and two because six doesn't equal two. Right, it can't be two things. Hmm. I think I might have a scientific calculator in my bag. Oh my goodness. A la torta. Look at that. Boom. Let's see what this one says. Here, let me close the. So, what we got? 6 divided by 3, 2, mas 1. Ah! 1. It says 6. Hmm. Is it Manny? I was on the calculator. Uh -huh. Okay. But it was flashing, so I was wondering if it was Manny. Um, yeah. Silly Manny. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, here's what we got to be careful of. To do this, we have to follow the order of operations. And you see we have a group right here. We have to do that first. We have to do the group first. So 6 divided by 3 times... Three. Would you agree with that? Okay. That's division, duh, right? That's, what's that? Multiply. Multiply. Left to right. This is six divided by three. Has to go first. What's six divided by three? Two? Two. Times three is six. Six is right. Incredible. Oh my goodness. So my phone got it right. This calculator got it wrong. Right? It said this one said two, I think. Yeah. yeah. So it's easy to mess up. You have to be careful. You have to take your time, make sure you're reading it. So now, when we do it from left to right? For multiplication and division, yes. So Jacobo, this is not like a mathematical fact. This is what's called convention. We all agree this is how we do math. If we wrote math a different way, we would do it in a different order. But we just agree that this is how we're going to do it. Like, another example of a convention, Evelyn, is like uh, that red light means stop and green light means go and a yellow light means hurry the hell up. Convention. Red does not inherently mean stop, right? 
red, like the color red doesn't mean stop. It just does, and it's a stoplight. That's what we agree it means. That's called a convention. We all agree the same way. So we all agree that the way that math is written follows this structure. Just like we all agree we read from left to right and then top to bottom in English and Spanish and most most languages are that way. It's no reason other than we all agree that's how it works. Yeah, Jackie? Mm -hmm. Okay, Jackie. So Jackie, let's talk about this one. Let's taco about this one right here. Let's taco about this one. To do this one, we got to take that X right there, and we have to put that 2 in its place. And then we have to follow the PEMDAS stuff. Oscar's like, yes! <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you like these better, though, seriously, or less? I like yeah. It's a little more straightforward, right? Yeah. yeah, until we throw square roots in there. We wouldn't do that, would we? I would. Wow, you hear that? He said, you probably would. <laughs> wow, thanks, Oscar. <laughs> 2 minus 1 squared plus 4. Huh. Hmm. I hope I've convinced you that a calculator won't really help you. It's going to get you confused. Unless the numbers are really big, I wouldn't use a calculator. Because they do... Cause the calculators don't mess up, we just use them all. And each calculator is programmed a little differently. So here, parentheses first, so that's 1, right? We have to square exponent before we can multiply. So that's going to be 2. 1 squared is just 1, because 1 times 1 is 1. Says your face. So, let, so 2, or sorry, 1 times 1 squared, right? 1 squared? 1 squared, right. one squared is 1. So 1 squared is 1. And then 2 times 1 is 2 plus 4, 6. Okay. Yeah? Yes. Cool. You want to build a snowman? <laughs> well, I don't know. We were talking about Frozen earlier. <laughs> yeah, we have to drive. There's not much snow around here. Yeah. So Evelyn, you think you can handle those? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Hmm. You want to try one? Okay. Ready, Gabby? It's going to be fun. You excited? Yeah? Okay. So let's do... Hmm. Hmm. Ooh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a big, ugly thing, right? I brought a pencil. It's a Dixon Ticonderoga number two. It's the best kind of pencil. The reason I brought a pencil is because I'm going to, we're going to do this problem right here, but I, I want to remind you, what if I had this and it asked you to see what it equaled? What would that whole thing right there equal? Zero. One. One. Anything to the power of zero is one. Okay, so I just wanted to remind you, don't 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 forget. Okay. All right, Yolanda, what number do you want X to be? Five. Five. Wow, that's rude. Okay, let's try it. Go ahead, you try. So I want you to evaluate this expression. You know the difference between an expression and an equation, Evelyn? An expression doesn't have an equal sign. It's kind of like. Uh, well, an equation is a complete sentence because it says this equals that. Yeah. But an expression is an incomplete sentence. Like my favorite, my favorite kind of ice cream is. I didn't finish it, right? That's how this is. This is, and then there's nothing. So we're going to find out what does this whole thing equal when x equals five. That's what you got to figure out. Actually, Yolanda 5 was a really good choice. Okay. You know why? Because the denominator is going to be 1, which means you don't have to reduce it. Because 
five minus four is one. So that's going to make. Man. Oh man, I got to get up early to keep up with you, Yolanda. You're on it today. You're like butter. You're on a roll. <laughs> Stupid math, huh? Mm-hmm. I always mess up the nine and eleven thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. When the yeah. subtraction's off by a one, like one from ten, either more or less, I mess it up. Because this one's twenty-seven minus thirty-six, right? On the top. Yeah. Uh oh. 27 minus 36. I think so. Wait, what? Oh, so I need to do 12 times. Wait, 12? Times. Oh. Square means times itself, not times 2. That's a that's an exponent of 2 right here. 6 times 6. Oh, see, that's what I didn't know what to do. Yeah. That's why we practice stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. It's not so bad, actually. Watch. Is it negative 9 over 1, which is just negative 9? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So Gabby, you work at Ross, and it's your favorite job ever. No. Hmm. Daniela, do you work? What about you? Do you have a job? No, I just do Where did you work? Mm -hmm. At Produce. Mm, okay. Did you like it? No. <laughs> I worked in Produce for seven or eight years, and I didn't like it. I hated it. Sales, all kinds of stuff, but yeah, I didn't like it. Because in that business, everybody... It's in everybody's best interest to be unhappy. Because the more angry you are, the more chance you have of making more money. Because people are going to try to make you happy by giving you a better price. So everybody's always complaining and they're always lying. Especially here. Nogales has like the worst reputation of all the produce cities in the country. Well, other than New York City. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Did you know that? Yeah. Everybody everybody in the country hates dealing with Nogales. Yeah. Yeah, because all the food comes in. Well, there's other places like McAllen, Texas. Oh, yeah, the Texas also. And they, they would probably, and, and like, there's a little bit that comes through California. They would rather deal with those two places in here. Partly, yeah. Um, Partly, it's like a lot of people here, like Big Fish, Little Pond. Like they think they're king of the world, but you know, they're not. So sometimes people have big egos. Yeah. Yeah. So, hmm. So didn't like produce. Jackie, you have a job? What do you do? Uh, yeah. I did it Do you like it? Yeah. Is it your dream job? No. Wanna do it forever? We've already covered Oscar. Not like in his job. And also, do you have a job? Yeah, what did you do? What did you do? Oh, yeah? Where? Yeah, where at? Um, well, the main office is in Tucson. But I mean, where were you? Oh, like, here at, at the booty free store. Mm. All he did was just walk around. And Make sure people don't put stuff in their pockets. Or walk. So did you like that? <laughs> long hours of standing in one place and yeah. gets to eat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I bet. I know where you work. Mm -hmm. Is that your dream job? Is it my dream job? 
The job is okay, but pay is not. No, right. Yeah. Okay. But it's not like your Not your dream job. What would be your dream job? Where I could be my own boss and make the most amount of money. <laughs> the limit, right? Yeah. Or <laughs> have somebody tell me how much I'm going to make, but I can make whatever I want. Based on how, on your performance. Mm -hmm. That would be nice. That doesn't really happen in education. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I make the same as every other teacher. Whether I do more or less, uh -huh. I could give worksheets every day right. and make the same as if I worked really hard every day. Mm -hmm. uh, I should get bonuses for making fun of kids, though, Jackie. <laughs> you were in my class. I'm a pro. Yeah. Anyway. Jackie, you, you want to be a nurse? Is that right? Hmm. And Ernesto, what do you want to be again? Um, not sure yet, but I was thinking maybe owning. Owning a business? Well, I mean, maybe having a little small, little restaurant. Maybe. Ooh, a restaurant, that'd be good, yeah. What about you, Oscar? I want to work in marketing. Well, that's what you're studying, right? Yeah. Business? Yeah. Hmm. What about you, Jacobo? What do you want to do? Uh, agribusiness. Agribusiness. Selling seeds? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, not, not like selling <laughs> seeds. Oh. But like planting and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about you, Daniela? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. Me either. I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. Gabby? Um, I'm not sure yet. IDK. Okay. I know I asked you guys this on the first day of school, or something really similar, but we're about a third of the way through, and it's easy to lose sight of why you're taking classes, especially after our first quiz. If you did good, you're like on fire, you're like woo woo, but if you did bad, sometimes you lose sight of it. Right, Jackie? Right. All right. So, hmm, makes me sad those two people aren't here today. All right. So, are we good on this? Yeah? So order of operations. You you can follow you can just write it down on the side when you're doing it and just kinda of follow it along. And just just go with it. Okay? Alright, Evelyn, what is it you want to do when you grow up? Uh, Hi Jenny. Massage therapy. Cool. You know Jenny's a foster mother now? Yeah. She was yeah. telling me she was like over to I know, and one of them was one of my students at high really? school. Uh-huh. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Okay. That's weird, right? She's like 19. Yeah. It's a crazy story. So the next thing we're going to do today, unless you want to practice another one of these. Do you want to practice another one of these, Daniela? No? Okay. Gabby, do you want to practice another one of those just to see? Probably a good idea. What what letter do you want to use? Ooh, good idea. We'll use an A and a B. A la torta. <laughs> hmm. Oh. Yes, that's good right there. Ooh. Now that might seem kind of ugly. But it's gonna get uglier. Woo! Equela. Oh, man, Jackie, that was just rude. I am sorry. Will you forgive me, Jackie? No. Oh, good. Good. Um, try this. And you just have to trust me. It's going to work out. It's going to work out. The, the number is going to work out. Math problems are almost always set up so that the answer, the number, the numerical answer, is something simple. Arriving at it might not be simple, but at the end, it's usually simple. in the house.
Did you get it, Yolanda, or are you stuck? I, I think nope. that's, what that's a nice pencil, too. That's a Dixon Ticonderoga number two. Yeah, they're really good. It's my favorite. Mm -hmm. Erasers are awesome. Mm -hmm. And the lead doesn't usually break really easily, and it's made out of wood. This would be, if I was going to use a pencil for a murder weapon, this would be the kind I'd choose. <laughs> yeah. They don't break so easy. Right, Jackie? I think I know yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me write that down. Right? All right. Let's see here. Still working. Still working. Okay. Oscar, are you done or not yet? I think so. Think so? Oscar, do you want to be in marketing because you get to be creative? <clears throat> yeah. But math doesn't feel creative, does it? No. You want to know? <laughs> so this kind of math really isn't creative. Math does get super creative. Um, the thing that's creative about this is the problem solving, and what I mean is your problem is figuring out how to pass the class, right? That's where you got to get creative. That didn't really help, did it? A little bit. A little bit? All right. Yeah. got to get creative. But we're the hardest problems to fix. We're all our own problem. We all, yeah. All right. Ready, Ernesto? Ernesto, we got to plug the 4 in here, correct? And the 9 here. And we have to divide that by 9. And we got to go follow, follow the order of operations. Here's the thing about this one. Man. Lacobo, the thing about this one that makes this tricky is I told you that the square roots go here, right? But sometimes square roots make a group. And this is a group. That's all a group. We have to simplify this before we can do uh, its square root. So this thing that I circled is actually right there. And after we figure out what number this equals, if we can make it into just one number, then we can simplify it. That's the tricky part. So um, square roots can group things. Jackie, you know what else can group things? Fractions. Fractions can group things too. For example, you can have something like like that. If you were going to plug a number in here, Gabby, you would have to add first on the top. You'd have to multiply those things on the bottom, and then you would have to divide it. This makes a group. Yep. Okay. So inside this group, what we really have like, is 4 times 9 squared divided by 9. 9 squared is 81, right? Oh my gosh. 4 times 81 divided by 9. Now, I don't have a tattoo. But I have a friend who works at a tattoo parlor, and I suggest that you get this as a tattoo. Because it's super important to remember. Yeah, RBM. Reduce before multiplying. Reducing is division. And this is division. Do you see? So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to show you this right here. The way we divide by 9, isn't that the same as multiplying by 1 ninth? Divided by 9 is the same as this. Right? You know that the order in which you multiply things doesn't matter? For example, 2 times 3 times 4, right? You could multiply, that's the same as 2 times 4 times 3. It's also the same as 3 times 4 times 2. You can mix it up any way you want when you multiply. It doesn't matter. You get the same answer. So I don't have to multiply these two together first. I could multiply these two together first. And when I'm going to do that, I'm going to reduce. Because 9 goes into 81 9 times. 9 goes into 81 9 times. That's where I got that 9. Now, there's a couple ways you could do this from here. Are we doing okay so far? Yeah? There's a couple ways we could do this from here. We could simplify this and this separately. Or maybe you're not thinking about that. Maybe you're going to multiply them together. And Yolanda's favorite square root is 36. You know you're never going to miss that one again. Somewhere on here. It's the first one. Oh, 
yeah. Right? Yeah, you're never going to miss that one from now on. Number. I know. Yep. That's just six. The number of times yourself that's 36 yeah. is six. There we go. Done. Ernesto, did you get it right? Yeah. Yeah? Still a little confused. That's what you said after your quiz. Okay. So you could divide any one by a nine, so you can make it shorter. Mm-hmm. And then you get just get four times nine. Mm-hmm. Isn't that easier than doing 41? Yeah. Four times 81, and yeah. then dividing that by nine? Uh-huh. Yeah, this is a lot easier, right? Yeah. That's why you got to get a tattoo. You already have a tattoo. You get another one. <laughs> Reduce before multiply. Super, super important. That's like, that's like a pro tip. Reduce before multiplication. That's a big deal. It's a big deal. Okay. Almost done, boys and girls. <coughs> the next one is, uh, well, it begins with the letter C, and it ends with unbind like terms. And in particular, when we're talking about combining, we're talking about add or subtract. And when we say like, we're talking about things that are the same. So that means the same combination of variables and matching exponents. That's the part that might get kind of tricky. And terms, terms are just parts. So in other words, Gabby, what we're doing here is we're going to be adding things together that are the same. That's what all that means. I'm going to add things together that are the same. And to be the same, they have to have the same variables, and those variables have to have the same exponents. So, like for example, like for an example, um, let's do 3a cubed b squared plus um, a cubed b squared plus uh, a squared b cubed plus 5 a cubed b cubed. Oh, that is so ugly. You want to know the good news is you won't have to do anything quite that difficult. But I want to show you what I mean by like terms. You ready, Evelyn? Yep. Evelyn, I'm going to circle in purple this color, which looks black up there. I'm going to circle two things that are like terms. You ready? Listo? This and this are like terms. Because do you see, the A has an exponent of 3 for both, the B an exponent of 2. Those two are the same. <coughs> so what I have, I have three of these plus one of these. There's one of them here. There's not a number in the front, so there's one. So that's three of those plus one of those. That makes four of those. Exponents don't change when you're adding. Exponents are repeated multiplication. So this and this are the same because they have matching, they have the same letters and matching exponents, right? This is different. It's a and b, that's good, right? And there's an exponent of 2 and 3, but the a is squared. And here the a is to the third. So there's nothing, this one's not the same as anything else. So it's going to stay the same. And this one, it doesn't have any friends either. It's all sad, Ernesto. Don't you feel bad for it? It's all alone. Maybe it's happy being alone. Maybe it's alone because it says to the other ones, look, you have a 3 and a 2, and I have two threes. I'm better than you. I don't know. Maybe that one's a mamon. Yeah, I don't really know. Either way, uh, to be like terms, same letter, same variable. And then you just add the number in the front. That's called coefficient.
of course a call you don't see a number coefficient to one Gabby do you like this stuff better than what we were doing with fractions or do you like the fractions better or do you hate all of it wow Five. that hurts <sighs> I'm crushed. Okay. Sometimes, um, sometimes before you can combine like terms, sometimes they ask you to do this thing that's called, well, it begins with a D and it ends with a distribute. Sometimes that comes first. So like for example, Evelyn, you know how the number with the parentheses means that number is multiplying with the thing inside the parentheses? Did you know that? Ernesto, you knew that? So this really means 3 times all of that. That's what this means. And we can like break it down and all that kind of stuff. The easy way to do it is just draw the silly arrows so that you're making sure that you multiply this number times everything inside the parentheses. There's only two things here, Gabby, so it's not too tricky. But if there were more, we'd have to multiply it by everything inside the parentheses. But not these. These are being added. So that's 3x minus 6 plus 5x minus 4. So, Daniela, after we distribute, we have to do that thing that begins with a c and ends with unbind like terms. Because distributing is like multiplying. And this is adding. And in the order of operations, you multiply before you add. Good, Evelyn? Yeah. Okay, Evelyn. Evelyn, um, how many X's are right here? One. Three, right. Oh, three. You know how I know there's three? three? That tells me. That's right. How many X's are right here? Five. Five. Is this a plus three or a minus three? Plus three. You don't see anything in the front, that means it's plus. Dang, Evelyn. That's why you're my favorite student. Yep. Don't worry, Yakov. I just told her that to make her feel good. <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, that's 3. That's 5. They're both positive. 3 plus 5 is 8. Yeah, yeah? That sounds obvious to say. And then, of course, that's a negative 6 and a negative 4. They're both negative. So that's going to be negative 10. Oscar's like, can we have a quiz on this? funny how much more, like, I mean, this isn't really fun, right? Not really fun, but when you're getting the right answers, it is more fun, or less sucky. I don't really know which way to say it. Yeah. Jackie, you know what really sucks, Jackie? What? Vacuum cleaners. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. True story. All right. So let's try, let's try, let's make sure we got this, and then, and then we're going to be done. Let's try, ooh, out of your book. Let's try number 52. I'll write it on the board for you right here. 4 times 2y minus 6. That's a 6. Plus 3 times 5y plus 10. Mm, dang. Evelyn's like on it. Right, Evelyn? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can you do the old, oh, yeah, like the Kool-Aid man? You know, the red pitcher dude. I don't dude. Voice for that. I know, but that's why it'd be funny. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it would be. What? You said no, and I said, yeah, it would be. I know, I'm just giving you a hard time. Yeah. <laughs> Nicola, you think you got this? Yeah. Easier than, than square roots, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a little more straightforward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oscar, what kind of things could cause you to get messed up with this?
the square root. Yeah, if we had a square root in the order of operations, I'd definitely get you messed up. But if it was just something like this, where it's just parentheses and what what would mess you up? Okay. Yeah. You know what would mess me up? If that was a minus sign right there. Instead of plus, if this was a minus, that would mess me up. I mean, I know how to m multiply by a negative, but I'd skip it. Gabby, what I'm saying is if, if this wasn't a plus, if this was a minus, this problem would be twice as hard. Just from that little difference. And the reason I mention it, Yolanda, is just so that it can be something you're aware of. It's not that tricky, but it's super easy to mess it up. Okay, so did you guys get this 8y minus 24? Is that true so far? Mm -hmm. mm. 15, 30. Yeah? Okay. This negative only goes with the 24. It doesn't go with everything else. The reason I brought my pencil was because if it said this then then everything else would be subtracted. But it doesn't say that. So, um, this thing and this thing, that makes bank day three and mass six. Yeah. Good? No, Jackie? I added a test. Oh, these two? See that that minus sign right there? That minus sign will get you. Oh, right here? Oh, you just make up your own problem. You do that one, and we'll do something else. Don't worry. You just you just do you. You do you. We'll do us. Okay. Last last. Uh, we're gonna do two problems, and that's it for the day. I just uh, thinking about that negative sign. I think it's something we should try just to make sure we're good. So let's try let's try the same problem but with a minus in the middle. And then let's try one here too. Let's try Yeah, let's try that. Let's try those two. Yolanda, did you get any cake this weekend? Cake? Cake. I did. Really? What yeah. kind? It was uh, black and white. Oh, where? At my house. It was Annette got married. Who got married? Annette. Oh, oh, I thought you. Oh, oh no, not not Arlette, Annette. No, Annette, the one who Yeah, the one, the uh, former, yeah, yeah. To, um, secretary, Mark. Yeah, Mark. Yeah. That's cool. They tied the knot. That's exciting. I good. Know. I'm happy for her. Yeah, me too. They've been together for a, a while. Yeah, three years. That's good. That's good. That's I cool. I know. So that's why I have cake. Nice. Wedding cake. Wedding cake. Wedding cake. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Ernesto, did you get any cake this weekend? I already asked you. No, I didn't ask you. Because I asked Evelyn, she had carrot or uh, cheesecake, mm. homemade. Yeah. That's just the way to do it. What about you, Ernesto? Did you get any cake this weekend? Uh, no. 
Really? Sadly. That is sad. <laughs> Don't go getting all the emo on us. There's maybe there's next weekend. You know. <laughs> Hope springs eternal, buddy. Just you know, just soldier through one more day. One day at a time. If you don't get cake today, maybe tomorrow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. What about you, Daniela? Did you get any cake this weekend? No. Do you like chocoflan? No? You and me, we're hanging out. Because that way, if the chocoflan fairy comes around and like gives away some chocoflan, you don't like it, maybe you'll give me your piece of chocoflan. And then maybe, if there's something I don't like and you do, then whenever somebody shows up and gives that away, I'll give you mine. That's going to be cool. You don't like choco flan. Really? I can't imagine. I don't mean like regular flan. I don't like that. But choco flan I like. Kova, you like choco flan? Yeah, sometimes I'll eat it. Sometimes. <laughs> huh. <laughs> Alright. What about you, Oscar? You like choco flan? Yep. Yeah. Gabby? Yeah. Yeah. Um, one time my brother-in-law and I, um, at my house, we were having a big party the next day. And he and I always get in trouble together. So we stayed up really late. And we're outside by the bonfire. And, um, well, we were hungry, so we came inside <laughs> and uh, ate an entire chicken and an entire choco flan with our hands. My wife was not happy. <laughs> I know. I know. She could have stayed up with us. Good so far? Good so far? Look, this is a plus 30 because it's negative times negative. Oh, yeah. That causes so much trouble. So you don't need to freak out and say, oh, I can't do it. But when you see a negative sign, you got to remember that math is like dating. You have to take your time. Otherwise, you do something stupid and you get your feelings hurt. And your friends are like, I told you, you're so stupid. It was right there the whole time. I told you it was no good. Yeah. So, Jackie? Now we have to do that thing that begins with a C and end, um, um, ends with umbine-like terms. Negative siete más seis. Ernesto, did you get it right? No. No. Who got it right? Okay. Almost? I get confused when you subtract when you add the third. Oh, yeah. Well, you have it in your notes. I know, but when I have a problem, it's like... That's why, you, like, look at your notes and see. So here's what I would do, Jackie. Um, since you're just, you're having trouble with that, right? Look at your notes and refresh your memory when you do it. You don't have to do it every time. You do it a few times, you'll get the hang of it, and it'll get faster and easier. Okay? Because here's why we're subtracting right here. This is a positive, and that's a negative. That means we're going to subtract oh, the no, two Oh, no, that notes. part, yeah, is the second number. Oh, these two? Yeah. Well, same deal, negative and a positive, right? So they're different signs, but we're not multiplying or dividing, right? We're adding and subtracting, right? Mm -hmm. So if they're different signs, you subtract the two numbers. So the difference of 24 and 30 is 6, right? And the 30 is bigger than the 24. So oh, the 30 okay. is positive, that's why it's a positive 6. Okay. It seems I wrote it uh, negative 24 and then plus 30 on the side. Hmm. Okay. Negative 24 minus 30. Yeah. Now, I did change the sign of the 10 here. Over here it was positive, you see, and I changed it. So, yeah, if this was a plus, then you would have been right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, last one. 3 minus 2x minus 2. Yeah? So that's right there. And okay, yeah, that's good, right? 3 minus 2 is 1. Did you get that one right, Yolanda? Those negative signs are tricky, aren't they? 
I think that's what we have to learn is just more practice with those negative signs. So, uh, all right. So then it's three minus two minus yeah. two x. It's it's three. Yeah. So oh, the things that are like terms yeah. are this and okay, this. So three. So it's just three minus two, which is one. Uh -huh. And then this is not a like term. It's all by itself. Hmm. You could also write it this way if you wanted. You could do the 2x first and the plus 1. Not, one isn't really better than the other. Mm -hmm. This one, you'll see more things this way. Okay. But they're the same. Yeah. So I think that I think some practice is in order. Mm -hmm. hmm. So I'm looking at your book. And... Um, on page 109, on page 109, um, that's that's evaluating. So here's what I would do. I would pick three problems on page 109 that have negative numbers. That's not mean hashtags, okay? It's negative numbers. And on page 110, I would try, if I was struggling with these, I would try like number 53. Mm. And uh, 54. 53, 54. That's a four, Hokobo, sorry. And then maybe like 47 and 48. So that's four or five, that's seven problems I think would be very smart to try. That shouldn't take you forever. I mean, we meet again on Thursday, right? So if you did those tomorrow, that would mean you've done math on Tuesday and then on Wednesday and then you did it again on Thursday. Jackie, it's the whole thing about moving the refrigerator. If you don't do these tomorrow, then you lose all of your momentum and you got to start all over on Thursday and that's trouble. Yeah, we'll take it the So you got to try them tomorrow. And then on Thursday, we'll go over them, okay? Anybody got questions? Well, you fine people have a wonderful evening, and I will see you on Thursday. No, Jackie. It's $10. Jackie, you should bring her coffee or something if you're going to take pictures. Oh, yeah, see? I scared you get coffee, Yolanda. I know, right? I don't. I drink mostly espresso. I like it. My wife bought me a fancy espresso machine in the fall, at the beginning of the school year. Oh. So I don't even drink coffee anymore. Wow. I mean, why bother? Is that like coffee times a thousand? Yeah. It is. Oh yeah. It does the job. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. Well, I I sit all day, so I don't know if that.